Today, I'll take a look at the option of audio reactivity in official WLAD and compare the use of an analog microphone to a digital microphone. I'll show the wiring and setup of both types, then do some side-by-side -side comparisons of the reactivity, responsiveness, and range. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. I'm back from taking a short little vacation, and thanks to all of you who expressed well wishes for my time off. Today I'll be taking a look at a couple of different microphone types that you can add to your WLED controller to provide audio or sound reactivity to your LEDs. Sound reactive forks of WLED have been available since around 2018. However, they were never the official release of WLED, often lagged behind the current version, and sometimes had their own issues in addition to any issues that existed in WLED itself. But beginning with 0.14 of WLED, there is now an option to include audio reactivity in the official install. And if the current beta versions of WLED are any indication, it looks like audio reactivity is going to be added into the base image so it will be included with all installations of WLED. All you'll need to do is add a microphone and enable audio reactivity in the options to be able to get sound reactivity out of your LEDs. Now WLED has support for both analog and digital microphones, but which type should you use for your project? Today I'm going to compare an analog to a digital microphone. And while there are a lot of different microphones of each type available, the two I'm going to use come from the recommended list of microphones on the WLED site. Be sure to check the video description for links to wiring diagrams, the configuration, fleet parts list, and more. So let's get started by looking at the controllers, the microphones, and the other components I'll be using. For the controllers, I've built two basic WLED controllers that I've thrown onto breadboards. If you want to know how to build your own WLED controller in about 15 minutes with no soldering, I have another video and related blog article you can check out after this one that includes wiring diagrams and a step-by-step -step process for installing and the initial configuration of WLED. Now do note that some ESP32 boards are slightly too wide to fit onto a breadboard and leave a row of holes on each side for your wiring. So you may need to either mount your ESP32 on pin headers like I've done here, which will raise them up and allow you to do wiring underneath in addition to the holes on each side. Or alternatively, you could do something like get an ESP32 narrow. This is actually a little bit narrower than this and will leave a row of holes on each side. The ESP32 narrows generally have 38 pins versus the 30 on the one I'm using here. It's really not going to matter in this case. We're only going to need a few GPIO pins anyway. As a third option, you can use something like an ESP32 Mini and just use the inner row of holes. Now I'll leave links to all three types of ESP32 boards down in the video description. I covered the installation of WLED step-by-step -step in that other video, so I'm not going to cover it again here, except to note that starting with version 0.14, there's an option to include audio reactivity as a user mod as part of the installation. And note if you select the latest beta version, audio reactivity option is gone because it's now included as part of the base installation. This may or may not change when version 0.15 is officially released, so you may need to check the WLED release notes. But in my case, I'm going to install the latest release version and add in the audio reactivity and install this on both of my controllers. So for our two identical controllers, I'm going to connect an analog microphone to one and a digital microphone to the other. Now, there are many different types of microphones out there, but these are the two I'm going to be using for my comparison. For my analog mic, I'm going to be using the Max 9814. This costs somewhere around $5 to $10, depending on your source and the quantity that you buy. It has an operating voltage of 2.7 to 5.5 volts. I'm going to be running mine off of 3.3 volts, and it will draw up to about a half a milliamp of current. Again, this is an analog device. We're going to need one wire connected to an analog pin on our ESP32. For the digital microphone, I'm going to be using the INMP441. This is actually a little bit cheaper than the Max 9814, running anywhere from $3 to $7, again, depending on your source and quantity. This has an operating voltage of 1.8 to 3.3 volts, so we'll obviously be running 3.3 volts to this. It can draw up to 1.4 milliamps of current. Again, this is a digital microphone. It's going to use I squared S for its communication. This means we're going to need a couple of extra wires over the analog version. The pinout and the wiring for the Max 9814 is pretty straightforward. 
Our ground pin connects to any available ground pin on our ESP32 or our ground rail if we're using something like a breadboard. Our VDD connects to our operating voltage, in this case 3.3 volts. Then we have this gain pin. We can set the gain to three different values and it's printed right here on the board. We don't connect anything, it's left floating and that gives us a 60 dB gain. Or we can connect this to ground for a 50 dB gain or connect it to our operating voltage, in this case 3.3 volts, for a 40 dB gain. The recommendation from the original sound reactivity fork recommends a 40 dB gain, so I'm going to connect this to 3.3 volts. Our out pin is our analog out, and we're going to connect that to any available analog pin on our ESP32. I'm selecting GPIO32. You can use any other ADC1 pin that you want. We'll tell WLED which pin we're using. Just don't use an ADC2 pin. You can't use those for analog input at the same time that you're using Wi-Fi. And finally, there is this AR pin, which is the tri-level attack and release ratio. Again, if we don't connect anything to it, it'll have a default value of 1 to 4,000. We can connect it to ground for 1 to 500 or to our operating voltage of 3.3 volts for 1 to 2,000 ratio. Again, we're going to take the default and just leave nothing connected to this AR pin. As I mentioned, the, the digital INMP441 is an I2S device, so it is going to take a couple of extra wires. Looking at the pinout and wiring for this, we have our VDD and our ground, which once again we're going to connect to 3.3 volts and any common ground connection. Then we have our serial data and our serial clock lines, which I'm connecting to GPIO 32 and 14. You aren't limited to just those pins but there are only certain pins you can use and you can check that out within the WLED configuration where it lists all of the valid pins that can be used. The next we have our serial word select, which I'm connected to GPIO 15. And then finally we have this L slash R. The L slash R indicates whether we want the digital signal to be put out on the left channel or the right channel, depending on whether we connect this to ground or our VDD or 3.3 volts. Since we're not really dealing with a stereo signal here, I'm just going to connect this to ground so our data out will be on the left audio channel. For the LEDs, I'll be using two identical 25 by 16 matrices. Now, these are both using WS2812B LED strips with a total of 400 LEDs each. One just has a black tape or a black PCB and the other white, but otherwise they're identical. Now, do note that audio reactivity can also be used with linear projects like this. Matrices just have some additional auto, audio reactive effects and will be a, a little bit easier to record side by side. But you don't have to have a matrix to use audio reactive WLED. Now, if you are interested in building your own matrix of any size or dimension, I do have another video on how I built these, including an option for adding uh, dual controllers to a single matrix, and you can check that out after this video. I've gone ahead and mounted both of my microphones. The analog mic here will be connected to the controller that is controlling this matrix, and the digital mic is connected to the controller for this matrix. But before we can actually look at this, we do need to go in and set up these microphones in WLED. I've already gone in and defined my number of LEDs and set up my matrix for both controllers, but I still need to configure the microphones. Here I have my analog mic set up on the left and my digital mic on the right, and currently is a version 0.14.4, the microphone and audio settings can be found under user mods, so we'll go there for both of these. And you should see an audio reactive section. If you don't see this section, it means you did not install WLED with the audio reactive option. Again, if the current beta version is any indication, you won't need to worry about this for future versions as audio reactivity will be installed with all base versions. For the analog microphone, it's really pretty simple. We're gonna enable audio reactivity and we need to select that single GPIO pin that we used in my case, if you recall, I use a GPIO32, and we will save that. For the digital microphone, once again, we enable audio reactivity, but then we set our three pins that we use. Remember, our SD, WS, and our clock was 32, 15, and 14. For the type of microphone, there are a number of different types here, but for the INMP441, you should just select generic I2S. There is no... M clock or master clock pin here, so we leave that as unused. Any other pins that we're not using should be marked as unused as well. And we will go ahead and save that. Now currently, when you make a change on that page, it does require a reboot of the controller. So we will just go ahead and reboot both controllers here. And we'll be ready to try things out. 
I have both matrices set up and ready to go. I should note that I did have to go in and make some changes to the setting for the analog microphone. I actually had to come in here to the user mods and I had to play around quite a bit with this squelch and this gain to even get any kind of reactivity out of the LEDs with the microphone at all. But I did not make any changes to the default settings for the digital microphone. So I've turned both matrices on, set it to an initial sound effect, and you can see it's reacting to my voice. But the one thing you do want to do is you want to set that squelch level so that when there's nothing but ambient background noise, none of your LEDs are lighting up. So you can see there when I stop talking, both matrices stop responding with no lights lit up. And just in case you're wondering, I actually just laid a couple pieces of paper over the top of the LEDs to provide a little bit of diffusion, just so it doesn't overwhelm the camera too much. Okay, let's try a little bit of music to see how both microphones react to music. Hey, you see that they're both reacting. The analog microphone does seem to be a little slower to respond than the digital mic. Right now, my music source or my speaker is located about three feet from the microphones just off of camera here. But again, we can see that they are both working. But it just seems like the analog microphone lags just a slight bit. Well, let's take a look at a different effect here. We'll put both of these over on a different effect. And you can see there's not a whole lot of difference between the two of them there. So it all seems to be working pretty well. Try a different effect. It pretty much uh, looks pretty close to being identical there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cue up some different music. So right now everything is still set exactly the same. All the settings on the microphone and the volume of the music is the same. But let's try a little bit different music. In this particular case, you can see you're getting much more responsiveness off of the digital microphone compared to the analog microphone. So what I've found is that you constantly have to go in and tweak the squelch and gain settings on the analog microphone based on the type of music that you're using and right now we're only looking at effects that react to amplitude or volume level. Well, let's take a look at a couple of effects that use frequency instead of volume. Okay, I've switched over to a frequency sound effect and you can even see with this one that the little hands or the arms are reacting much more to frequency, even just my voice with the digital microphone as opposed to the analog microphone. Let's go ahead and start up the music, however. Similar to my voice, you're getting much more responsiveness over here on the digital mic versus the analog, which just seems to be overwhelmed. And I've even went in and played around with the squelch and gain settings, and it's still pretty much maxed out, while I haven't had to make any changes whatsoever to the digital mic. But let's take a quick look at a different effect, one you're probably much more familiar with. That is a graphic equalizer. Again, you can see we're getting much better frequency response out of the digital microphone while the analog microphone just still continues to be overwhelmed or saturated. Again, I could go in and change the gain settings or the squelch settings, but then my effect that I showed before based on amplitude would probably have to be tweaked. So it seems like with the analog microphone, I'm constantly having to go in and change the gain and squelch settings while the digital microphone, again, I haven't changed anything on this one whatsoever. Another good example of where we're really just not getting much reactivity out of the analog microphone. There is one final thing I want to test here. I've set the effect back to an amplitude or volume based effect and I'm going to switch over to a wireless microphone and I'm going to begin walking across the room and see how the two different types of mics respond. I've switched over to my wireless mic and at this point I'm still sitting about two to three feet away from the microphone. So again my Voice isn't being amplified with this wireless mic, but now I'm going to walk about 10 feet away. So now I'm about 10 feet away from the microphone, and if I talk a little bit louder, you can see the analog mic does occasionally pick up the sound, but the digital mic is still working just fine. So now I'm going to back all the way up here to about 20 feet. So now I'm standing about 20 feet away from the microphone. The digital microphone is still picking up the sound, but we're getting nothing from the analog mic. So finally now, I'm going to stand, this is about 30 feet away from the microphone. 
And again, you can see that it, the microphone or the digital microphone is still able to pick up my voice just fine. If I try to say something really loud, we're still getting nothing off the analog mic. So you're definitely going to get better range, especially if you have a large room and you might have your music source placed some distance away from your LED install. It's still possible to use a digital microphone. Now I'm walking back closer again, and now you can see that the analog mic once again begins to pick up my voice. One final thing I should mention, this especially applies with those frequency-based effects. There are often a lot of these sliders down here where you can tweak things like the frequency and other settings for that effect in your microphone. But as a general rule, I found I really don't have to mess with those much with digital microphones as it pretty much just works with the defaults. The analog microphone, on the other hand, I often have to tweak things like the gain and the squelch and a number of these effects to get the best results. So as a general rule, a digital microphone is going to provide much better response consistency and range over an analog microphone. Now an analog microphone may be okay in certain situations where you're able to place the microphone close to a consistent audio source, but I agree with, with both the WLED and the Sound Fork uh, wikis that do recommend a digital mic as you're going to get better response. It doesn't cost any more than an analog mic. In fact, it might even be a little bit cheaper and the only real trade-off is that you need a couple of extra wires for that microphone. Now, I've had a number of you ask about using a direct line-in option. This is possible and supported by WLED, but it either takes some additional wiring and components or something like a line-in to an I2S uh, converter board. And again, you can find information on that down in the video description and on the official WLED website. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.